Hello guys, welcome back to Heavy Metal Rex. Today I'm doing things a, a little bit different. I'm actually sitting downstairs in my basement. I've been wanting to set this space up so I can record more car videos or just videos in general, things that don't require me to be either in my car or in the garage or somewhere like that. So this is actually my office. This is, I know it's a little bit bare. I've got, the best I've got back here is my guitars, which is kind of where the heavy metal part of Heavy Metal Rex came from. If you've seen some of my older videos, I actually write all of my own music. Uh, this way I don't have to go and find random music from the internet. Uh, makes it a lot easier. Plus I like, I like playing, so this is pretty normal for me. Uh, what I wanted to do today was go over um, the car that I ordered, because I'm super excited. Every day I think about it and I watch videos, I talk to people about it, it's super fun. I wanted to show you the car I ordered and a couple of things on like the differences between the trims. And also a couple of months ago, somebody was talking about how exorbitantly expensive you can make the GT, which is something that we'll talk about as well. So I'll, you should see that uh, I've got my screen recording as well. So we're just gonna get into this. Uh, first, I wanted to show you what I ordered. So I got a 20, so I got the premium uh, ceramic white, which is different. I've had the blue, I had the World Rally blue this time, but with all of the black cladding, I thought that this was a really good option because then I don't, particularly have to worry too much about getting it painted because there's a there's a good contrast between it. Uh, some of the, the options that I went with was the cargo tray, the all-weather floor liners, the mud flaps, and the short throw shifter. Now, it's 427 for the shifter. I think most of the shifters for the VA were about 25300, which I feel like if I can just get it and it's already installed, it's one less thing that I have to worry about. I have actually never done any of the transmission work. I never put the uh, the pitch stop or the or the bushing in my 2021. So I'm probably not gonna mess with this one right away. So I was like, do you know what, just order it, it's no big deal. The cargo tray and the all-weather floor liners, I already had, and with a kid, and if you have a pet or something like that, honestly, this, these might as well just come with the car. I don't know why they don't come with the WRX, because the Crosstrek, the Forester, and the um, Outback actually come with those those two things, the cargo tray and the floor liners. They come, they're standard. They just, it just comes with the price, which I don't, you know, some things like that I don't really understand. So let's look, what's going on with my mouse? All right, so I wanted to talk about some of the trims, and this has been a big issue um, with this compared to like the 2015 and 2021, where the base price hasn't really gone up that much. I think actually the original base was like, 28 something, 28,500. And 29,605, like going up by like 1,500 bucks, is really not that big a deal. Uh, but my suggestion would still be, if you're gonna get one, get the premium. There's a couple of things that the base just doesn't have the option for, or just aren't, it's just not worth it to get over, um, skipping the premium. Um, mainly things like, let's see if I can find it here. So like the bigger wheels, it's just nicer, you know, if you're not gonna get, if you're not gonna get aftermarket wheels, just get the premium wheels, they're actually pretty nice. Uh, and they're actually, for OEM wheels, they're not that heavy. I believe they're like 23 pounds, which is, for an eight and a half, that's actually pretty good. Um, the base does not come with the option for the, the Harman Kardon sound system or the glass moonroof package. That is completely off the table. So even if you want better audio, you can't have it. You want the sunroof, you can't have it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Things like the the, uh, the performance transmission, which we're not even, we're not even going to talk about that here. I have yet. I've driven an old CVT, and it's okay for a CVT. I have not driven this new one, so I don't want to make any comments on it until I actually can drive one and, and give you like an actual uh, proper assessment. Uh, the iSight technology, that's that safety stuff, which safety is very important. But apparently, Subaru feels that either you should be safe or you should be driving fast not both so they just that's an option for all of them not really that big a deal um the main things that i think are are a big deal here is having the push start push start not so much i don't really care about that about that but the keyless access if you have a family or even one child having the keyless is really nice it's a an added benefit um to be able to go in and just open your door without it look around for your keys <laughs> i will say some other cars do this. Subaru doesn't. Actually, check it out. None of the Subarus do this. On uh, other cars, some other cars, like for example, we have a Volvo. If you, you can unlock and lock any individual door, 
So if I go to any door, I walk up to it, I grab it, it'll open that one door. If I want to lock that one door, I can touch it, it'll lock it. Subaru, on the other hand, if you, if you walk up to the driver door, you can unlock and unlock, you can lock and unlock the driver door only. Or if you go to the front passenger door, it will unlock all of the doors. So for me, I have one child, four year old. If I do that, I always start on the passenger side anyway, open that door, unlock all the doors that get in the car. So like really it's not that big a deal, but if you're used to a keyless entry system from other cars, keep that in mind. Uh, the power windows front, you know, um, the power windows up down, that's that's usually just a not, I don't know why they always list stuff like this as a benefit. It is a benefit. Auto down windows, some people like them, some people don't, so you don't really have a care. This is something that's actually really important. Again, I guess it is situational. I have a child. So if she has a tablet in the back, I have to, there's no place for me to plug it in. I actually have to run a slightly longer USB cable and plug it in the center console, you know, by opening it. Having two in the back, that's actually really nice. Um, that's a pretty big deal. Uh, rear armrest, which actually, again, my kid puts her cup in there, so that's actually really nice to have. Um, dual illuminated vanity mirrors. Again, this shouldn't even, these two things shouldn't even be an option. They should just be standard on every car. I don't know why, like, the nickel and diming has to go that low. Uh, dual automatic climate zone, this is kind of cool. Now this is something, this right here is kind of important. Having the Starlink, not even the Starlink, just the bigger screen. So right now, I think it's a seven inch screen on my car and I have a premium and it's a small screen. So with the reverse camera, it's even smaller in, in that screen. So it's not the clearest. And I know the 11 and a half is like 11 and a half this way and not 11 and a half this way, but still it's wider just enough to where it's a little bit bigger and it's just a better looking screen. And the, the center console, the base, honestly, it, if you go check out pictures, it actually doesn't look that good. I, you know what, here, let me just, I'll pull it up right now so you guys can see. Let's see if somebody has pictures of it. So this is the base. It doesn't look that great, right? It, it looks okay. I mean, it looks better than what, we've, what we're accustomed to, but like, this is the premium. Like, the premium looks a lot better, even though it's a, it looks a lot better. Like, it's a better screen. Having that single big screen is cleaner. It's a cleaner aesthetic than having like this. <laughs> I don't even know why they, they did it. I don't know what, for whatever reason, it just looks cheap. Somehow it looks cheaper. You know, I guess this is a better picture, but it looks cheaper than this. So I suggest you go, you look at it, you touch it, experience it for yourself. Just, just don't go based off what people tell you on the internet. Definitely go check it out. But that's, that is, I would suggest that. Um, the speakers, six speakers in the pre in the regular, the Harman Kardon and the premium, I'll tell you right now, audio sucks. The audio sucks in 2021. I've been in the 2022, the audio sucks there too. Just, if you wanna spend the money on the sunroof, you're gonna get the speaker system. There's no, like they come together now. Uh, it doesn't hurt, but you know, if, if it's $1,800 too much and you don't want the sunroof, you can just like replace the speakers. You can just replace whatever, put out whatever aftermarket speakers you want. It'll, it'll still be better. Uh, some of these other things I'm not really too concerned about. If you're getting a WRX, you're not super worried about safety, but believe it's still a very safe car. Obviously without the eyesight system, it's different, but the I've not seen any manufacturer put that on a, um, on a manual car yet. So that's something you're just gonna have to live with. So so this was mine. The the fun thing is I wanted to actually go through some of the some of the options that you can buy because there's tons and tons of options. There are tons and tons of options. I wanted to build a GT specifically because people were talking about how you can make it like over fifty thousand dollars for a GT with and not even like every option, but just like options that you would kind of want. Um, now the difference between these, yeah, there's no package for this because it actually comes with all of them. So like, for example, if you look at WWX, you know, the, the GT actually comes with the sunroof. It comes with the Harman Kardon system. It comes, you know, because it is automatic, it does come with, 
the uh, the drive mode select. You've got the adjustable dampers, which everybody wants. The Ricardo seats, which everybody wants. You're just gonna have to get over it. You're not gonna get them. Um, but because they have the automatic, it comes with the eyesight. So it's probably you could say the safest out of all of them. Uh, probably any automatic you get is gonna be the safest WRX. Um, and it's just crazy that it starts. It starts at forty-two thousand. That is. 42 is, I think, the, what the price was for the STI Limited, I believe. If we go look at the uh, 2021 STI Limited, oh, WTI Limited price, what was it? Yeah, the STI Limited started at 41. So just, just think about that before you go out and buy a GT. Um, that's It's just, it's expensive, so. Um, now we'll just leave whatever color. That's not that matter. It doesn't really matter. It's got the suede stuff in it, but I mean, look at all these 75 different things you can put on there. You know, crazy, like overpriced things even. Something like, you know, $75 for a windshade. That seems really expensive. You know, this thing, this is actually kind of cool. The auto dimming exterior mirror. I considered getting this, but like, I mean, everybody's got a phone. People got flashlights on their, um, their keychains sometimes. So I feel like that's not that expensive really useful but I mean for 265 this it's not bad if you got your hands full of something that's kind of cool um, side molding for 350 bucks honestly I actually joked about this they gave you the option to have these door guards and side molding they should have just given you the option for colored side skirts at the minimum right at the minimum people would have paid for that as an option um, you know this another really cool thing having this uh, LED trim on there but for 449 I don't think so. I think that's too expensive. A uh, couple, let's see, what else? Other cosmetic things. This I thought was really interesting because for 1200 you get just the muffler tips, right? I'm pretty sure ETS and uh, Remark are selling the mid-pipe and the mufflers for 1200 So if you like the aesthetic, if you like the sound, definitely get it. If you don't want to install it yourself, go for it. But I feel like that that is a pretty big price difference. Um, something to keep in mind. And then of course they got all these aero kits, you know, for <laughs> a crazy amount. Which honestly, I don't even think they're carbon fiber. I think they're just whatever plastic, you know. Uh, they got it for the front. They got it for the back. They got it for the sides. You know, you put you can put a colored side skirt on there, but you can't have an actual body colored side skirt, which is again, it's just so weird. Okay, this is another thing that I found was really weird. Two forty nine for a button this thing already comes with push start there's already a button there why the hell is the red button 250 dollars that makes no sense whatsoever uh, carbon fiber trunk trim eh, you know maybe if it was the the spoiler itself actually you know what i think they do sell the spoiler it's a little expensive you can get some ricey stuff too like uh, a full well illumination which i don't subjective again my opinion, not necessary, weird. This, this right here, LED upgrade kit, this is actually the most worth it item on this list, except it is overpriced. It is $108 and you get the interior map and dome lights, that's it. Only those two things. I bought mine for my 2021, I actually have a video on this, for $19 and it gave me the vanity lights, um, oh, sorry, sorry, the interior, the map lights, the dome lights, the vanities for both driver and passenger, the um, LED inside of the trunk, so the trunk light, and the bulbs that were on top of the uh, the license plate. So like LEDs all around. So for them to just give you like two bulbs for $108, that is overpriced. But I hope that they have a kit for the 2022 afterwards because I don't want to stick with the yellow lights in there. Uh, you got the rear diffuser, also very <laughs> incredibly expensive. These are really cool, but not for 300 bucks. Uh, the sport grill, a lot of people are buying it, but again, $415 and it's not even carbon fiber. It's just plastic. Really cool, overpriced. Um, a couple other, these things, this strike kit, I'm not really sure what it is. Light, lightweight ground effects. I guess this replaces what you have already, but I wish they had it zoomed out a little bit so you can kind of see what, uh, what it looks like. And a couple of these other things, like, I don't know why you would want to get that. And this I found weird. You already get ultra suede in the whole car, but 
it's still an option to add other things ultra suede. So I guess the seats are suede, but things like this, like the trim is not, so you can get it extra. It's really expensive. I don't know why you would. Um, I feel like if you're paying 42,000, those, like everything that's cloth should be suede, period. Like, it should not be an extra option. Uh, a couple other things like a diffuser, you don't, you don't need that. Like license plate, $35 for a pet lover's license plate. You can get that off Amazon. And a lot of pet options. Um, kind of cool, again, this, something like this, pretty cool if you have a pet. But I actually, I built one out earlier and um, <laughs> look at these options I put it. $52,000 with like semi-decent options too. Like the, uh, the auto dimming mirror, the cargo net, cargo tray, moonroof, deflector, the, the push start, the, the remote engine start. So I think like if you have an automatic, you can actually get that as, as an option. That's kind of cool. Some of the more expensive cars do tend to have that, which is kind of nice. I threw on like all, like every single cosmetic that I could throw on there. Like, and I mean, just look at that. 52, that you could, if you want, you could pay $52,000 for a WRX, an automatic WRX. Now granted, it does come with Recaros and it is gonna come with the, uh, the electronic dampeners, but even at base, $41,000, I'm, <laughs> I can't find myself wanting to pay $42,000 for an automatic WRX. You know, at that point, at that price point, there's a lot of other cars to consider. You know, the Corolla's coming out, the GR Pro is coming out. You know, you can get a Golf R probably for $40,000. You know, then now you have another option, even though it's not all wheel drive, you got something like the, um, the Elantra N, which there's been a lot of videos online. It's doing really surprisingly well. I think not a lot of people thought it was going to be as good, but I mean, I think pretty sure it comes with like, I don't know if it comes with a dual clutch in that, but I mean, any kind of automatic is going to be better than a CVT or what they're calling Subaru performance transmission. I, again, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything about it until I finally drive one, but if you want a $42,000 WRX, it's there compared to something like this, like the one that I built, you know, just having the short club shifter is, is enough, you know, unless you want to buy your own aftermarket one. They don't have one yet, but I mean, it's almost it's $20,000 more. And I feel like what you're getting out of it is just not enough because I'm pretty sure you could probably pick up some seats, some aftermarket seats um, from like a, a part out, somebody's parting it out and install it in there. Uh, something like this, actually, oh, that's nothing. So the premium doesn't come with uh, electronic seats. So if you're used to your car having electronic, like electronic adjustable seats, we don't get that. And even my premium didn't have that. And so it's like little things like that you gotta think about. Like if we go back to the, um, the comparison between them, let's look. Where is build and price? So if you look at the stuff between it, you know, they all come with like your general stuff, but as soon as you move up to the premium, you've got the bigger wheels, you've got the 11 inch screen, you've got the, um, the all weather heated packages. And if you're, if you're from somewhere where it's cold, that is actually worth it. You know, LED fog lights, dual zone climate, you know, keyless entry. These are like good features to have for like not that much more. You're looking at about 2,500 bucks, whatever. And then you get into the option if you want to have the sunroof, you know, that's it. But if you go from the premium to the limited, I feel like it's all that stuff, plus the suede. So you get the suede interior, the speaker system, the moonroof. So that, that's basically like an $1,800 option. So you're going from um, 32 and just adding the sunroof and the sound system, that's 1800 bucks. So you're looking at 33,900, right? So you're almost, you're almost 34. So then an extra, $2,500, they, they'll give you the LED headlights, which are kind of cool. The suede upholstery and the 10-way driver's seat. Is it worth 2,500 bucks? That's kind of up to you. But then like now you go from 36 to 42, and I understand $1,800 is also the price for the transmission, but you're looking at the transmission, the seats, the eyesight system, it's worth it if you had maybe like more of a safer car. Right, maybe not like a sedan. Maybe you're looking at, I don't know, like the Outback. But I think even the Outback Turbo ends up like pretty expensive. Just, I mean, these are things to think about. You know, 
I, at the end of the day, I'm super excited for mine, um, just the way that it is, because I have tons of parts that I want to get on it. I've got my J-Pipe already on pre-order. That's going to be here sometime soon, um, I, whenever they decide to ship it. I know the ETS intake is already shipping. Their intercooler is supposed to be coming out very soon. You know, I'm going to have videos on all this stuff. Uh, the JB4, I haven't bought it just yet. I want to try to part out my car, which I'm supposed to do sometime, sometime this upcoming week, I think, and start selling my old parts. Like, I got to sell the cob, I got to sell the headlights. You know, I'm probably going to sell. I still haven't decided because I was actually talking to some of these other YouTubers and they're modifying their old axle backs and even their mid pipes to work with a 2022. Like, um, right now I have MA Performance. Uh, axle back, mid pipe, and J pipe. The J pipe I'm probably gonna try to sell, but like if I can keep the mid pipe and the axle backs and just like have have my exhaust guy just re weld it, to me that would be really cool because I can just like use what I already have. So we'll see how it goes. I know Grim Speed has a video. They actually did exactly that when they were mocking up their their exhaust. They were able to attach it, um, you know, re weld it and attach it. So if you guys have a 2021 and you're thinking about getting a 2022, it might be worth it for you to check one out and see if you can even move some of those parts over because it might save you some money and time in the long run. Uh, but anyway, I don't want this video to get too long. I just wanted to, to share that. I just wanted you guys to see this, this crazy number. It's mind blowing um, that a WRX, that there's no STI and there's a WRX that costs $50,000. But I, I don't know how many people are actually buying a WRX for $50,000. I know people are buying a GT. And that's fine, you know, if you have the money and you like it, then that's all, you know, that's all that matters. But I, I will need to drive it to see if it's even worth it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please subscribe and stick around. As soon as this 2022 comes in, there's going to be tons of videos. It is going to be super fun. I'm going to build it up as much as I can. I hope that I have the most unique one here in St. Louis. I already have a guy who's going to be doing all kinds of graphics on mine. That's why I got white. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one.